Hi there, my name is Claire Elliott and I am an aspiring author writing a young adult contemporary fantasy and I met with an agent. And today I'm gonna be talking about what I learned from that meeting. So this was a meeting with an agent at an online conference and one of the extra things we could add on was a meeting with an agent and I did pay extra for it and I wanted to make this video to talk about whether it was worth the money, what I learned, and maybe save you the money if it's not in your budget. I will say that I would I thought it was very useful, but I wouldn't have priced it at what I paid. So if you were going to be paying like $50 or $40, it would be worth it. But I did pay more than that and I don't know that it was worth more than that, but it was worth something to me. What did I learn? What was it worth? Here we go. She talked about my query. She read my first 20 pages and she read my synopsis and she had feedback on all three, but mostly actually on the query letter, which was very helpful because there was a lot of ways that I could improve on that. But was also a little bit disappointing because then I didn't get so much feedback on my writing and maybe that's a really good thing, but also maybe there are things that she just didn't say because my, you know, my query is a letter. It's like a page and we spent a long time talking about that and my first 20 pages were 20 pages and you know, the, the amount of feedback per sentence, let's say is, you know, an astronomical difference, but Let's talk about the query. So I had a pull quote at the top of my blurb, like that I'd put in italics and I felt like that set the stage, like the mood, it gave a little bit of my character's voice. She said, cut the quote, basically we don't care. We're gonna read your first pages, so you don't have to do that. It's slowing us down and getting into your query and we don't need it, so basically cut it. She also said, my query was too broad. It needed more stakes and more specific risks. So I had very sort of vague or else, and she wanted me to be very specific. And that was useful because another thing that it pointed out to me is that the book is also lacking in those specific stakes. To me, they were sort of clear emotional stakes, but it's very helpful to have real clear stakes. And so this is something that she was talking about for the query, but that I'm going to be applying to the whole novel, which is dialing in on, so I want her to feel like if she doesn't succeed in this, she's going to be a failure. How can I make that vague sense of failure a really specific failure? And so I'm adding these other characters that are experiencing what she's trying to avoid so that she can contrast with them very clearly. And I think that's really gonna amp up the risk and it'll show in my query, but also in the story. She wanted me to have a higher word count. So my first draft clocked in around 73K and that is at the lower limit of the range, but I thought it would be fine. And she said, actually for young adult uh, contemporary fantasy, she would want to see something around 80 or 85 and 73 is looking a little like, yes, it's in the range, but what's going on? And I'm not too worried about that because I wrote lean, especially at the end. I feel like I was just like, let's get this over with. And now I have a ton of editing to do. I'm adding those stakes. I'm adding a whole bunch of new scenes. I'm also beefing up the, basically everything from the midpoint on. I wrote much leaner than I should have. So I actually think I might overshoot the 85. I think that I'll be safe up until 90. And then if I cross 90, I'll have to edit down. Um, so I'm not too worried about that piece of feedback, but that was interesting because what I'd read online was that anywhere between, you know, 70 and 100 was good, but she was actually very specific about, you know, 80, 85 being the real sweet spot for what she would have been looking for, for young adult contemporary fantasy. Um, I had written that this uh, book that I've written can, is, can stand alone, but I planned it as a duology. And then we talked about that and she said, just pitch it as a duology. A good agent will be able to recognize the ways in which you would edit it to stand alone, but you have written it with a plan of a duology. And so pitching it as a standalone is not quite honest. And a good agent will be able to see the ways in which it could become a standalone. And so you don't need to include that. And similarly, if you have written a standalone, but you're open to making more, you don't have to write that you have planned a series or that you are open to it because a good 
a good agent will recognize the ways in which you could make a book that you've written as a standalone into uh, a series. And the other thing she said was that I don't have to be worried about a duology tanking my chances because a two series is a very reasonable number. So if I'd written like a book that I planned as the first in a series of 10, that would be something like a little bit of a red flag. Unless it was amazing, it would be a big risk for an agent. But because it's one of two, she said that that wouldn't be too big of a risk either for the agent and for the agent to then sell to publishers. She said a duology is safe enough. So I don't have to worry about that. So I will be moving forward and querying this as a duology, not as a standalone with duology potential, which I do feel better about because I want it to be a duology. I have a second book plotted and I wanna do that. In my synopsis, there was this queer plot line. Obviously it's the Iliad. Of course there is queer love between the Achilles character and the Patrocles character but it's not really present in my blurb. And I said, well, you know, the romance doesn't start until sort of solidly into the second act and she meets the romantic, uh, the romantic lead sort of between the first and second act, but the romance doesn't start. And so I didn't know how much of into the second act I should be pushing because it's, you know, you're not supposed to reveal too much in the blurb. And she said that you're not supposed to reveal too much, but if something is a really important part of the selling point, the fact that your book is queer, you do want to highlight that. So bringing certain things, especially themes and not necessarily plot points that are gonna spoil anything to the forefront, even if they happen later is okay. Um, so I will be doing that as well in my query. For the synopsis, she basically wanted more information. Um, and also she wanted more of the information in the synopsis to show up in the query. I don't know how I'm gonna do that because both of these things have very small sort of page limits. You're not supposed to go over a word count and it's like at a certain point, people tell you to edit that out, edit that in. You're like, oh, but we'll see how that goes. She wanted more queerness that she saw in the synopsis in the query. She wanted more of the relationship with the mother in the query. Um, and then in the synopsis, she wanted more of the intentions. So what were the intentions of the characters when they did certain acts? Um, because things didn't work out well and it wasn't clear if like the way things didn't work out was part of the plan or not. And I was like, well, no, it's not. And so she was like, well, you have to clarify that, which is fair. Um, and then in my pages, she had a couple very nice comments. She liked the way my characters kind of complimented each other as foils. Um, she likes that there's all these things that I'm building up that my character loves that she's gonna lose, which obviously sucks for the character, but is good for reading. Um, she really liked uh, the, pen the way that Penelope's magic worked, which was fun because I had had some people be confused about that. And it was very nice to hear that the agent really liked that. Um, and she wanted me to have more internal about why the main character was making her choices, which again is something that she had mentioned a little bit for the synopsis as well. So I thought that was really useful. And then once we'd gone over that feedback, we had a little bit more of a conversation and I asked her a few questions, one of which was that I have a scene that's based on a popular piece of pop culture. And I wondered how much of those pop culture references toe the line with uh, like fair use rights and if I could include mentions of pop culture things in my novel. And she said, as long as you're not quoting them, you are like, those are public things and you can mention them. If you print the lyrics of a song, that's a problem. But if you just mention the song, you're in the clear. Um, and another thing that we talked about was my comp titles because I was feeling a little bit insecure about them. And one of them, is an older book, not super old, but like 2015. And she said that that's an okay comp because it's such a good comp. But she also said that one thing, if you're feeling a little bit nervous about your comps is to explain them and that she actually prefers it when people do. So instead of saying it's X meets Y meets Z to say it's the teenage drama of X meeting the magic and world building of why with the existential crises and tone of Z or whatever the combination is. And when you do that, you're showing that you're very aware of what parts of these books are relevant. You're triangulating your story more clearly. For instance, I could have a story that's Jane Austen meets 
the zombie apocalypse, but that could go in many different ways. And if I just mean it's a Regency apocalypse, you know, that's one thing, or it could be a futuristic, you know, haters to lovers, enemies to lovers romance, which is a very different thing. So when you specify what parts of your comps you're sort of drawing from, then your agent will have a much better sense of where they're going with of where you're going and she said that when you do that you can get even more leeway with your comps not being perfect because you're specifying so then you can have a slightly older comp or a slightly less popular comp or a slightly more popular comp than you know should be used because you're not saying this is harry potter you're saying with the boarding school aesthetic of harry potter well then it's okay you're not saying you're the next harry potter you're just comparing your aesthetic to the harry potter aesthetic so those were the things I learned from talking to an agent. Again, I think it was useful. It was definitely useful. And if it gets me an agent, it will be worth whatever money I spent. But I don't know that in another situation I would spend as much money as I did. And I, for the record, spent over $100. So I would have priced it at like $50. That's okay. Um, the money went to the conference, so that's a good thing. That's all from me. Again, my name is Claire Elliott, and I'm an aspiring author of young adult contemporary fantasy. If you like this video, give me a like and a subscribe. I'm going to be making more videos about what I learned at this conference. Take care. Bye.